It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hop Along Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hop Along Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. Death Runs Dry. Right now, in response to an SOS from one of Hoppy's old friends, Jim Dodge, Hoppy and California are entering the office of Dodge's attorney, Sam Conway, in the little cow town of Pocorio. Morning. Uh, you Mr. Conway? No, sir. I'm Max Shively, Mr. Conway's law clerk. Is there anything I can my do? My name is Hopalong Cassidy. This is oh, my partner. Oh, of course, Mr. Cassidy. We were expecting you. Right this way, sir. Follow me. Mr. Conway is in his private office. Uh, just get into town? Yeah. It's Mr. Cassidy. He and, um... Uh, Carlson. California Carlson. Uh, come in. Come in. Uh, sit down. Thanks. I have a letter from Jim Dodge. He wrote me you'd show us how to get to his ranch, the Lazy D. Yes, of course. I'd take you there myself if my horse wasn't over at the blacksmith shop right now, but it's easy enough to get there. I, uh... Certainly hope you can do Jim some good. Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Conway, I didn't quite understand from his letter just what his trouble is. Except that he seems pretty desperate about meeting payments on a loan. Yes, the old man's had some mighty bad breaks lately. Since the drought hit this area, his cattle have been dying like flies. Drought? Why, that rain we just rid through didn't seem like any drought to me. Mr. Carlson, that was the first rain we've had in months. And it's only a drop in the bucket compared to what we need. You don't say... From the looks of that blazing sun outside, I'd be surprised if it rained again for another long stretch. That's why Mr. Dodge borrowed money enough from the Valley Range Association to put in a new irrigation system. So he wrote me. The trouble seems to be that if he doesn't complete the irrigation project in another five weeks, he loses the ranch. Unfortunately, that's true. Unless he pays off the loan, of course. I've been doing my level best to get an extension. But with all these accidents he's been having, I... That's another thing, Mr. Conway. Jim doesn't think they were accidents. Well, you can't blame the old man for being suspicious, Mr. Cassidy. I suspected foul play myself when the scaffolding on the new dam collapsed. Killed three of his men, I understand. Yes, that's right. Two more died just yesterday in a premature explosion of some dynamite. The sheriff investigated both times, and pretty thoroughly, too. But there doesn't seem to be anything to point to the possibility of foul play. Are you pretty familiar with these men working for Dodge... Is there any chance that one or two might be, uh, well, working undercover for other interests? You mean for the Valley Range Association? <laughs> no, Mr. Cassidy, hardly. It's an Eastern-controlled outfit. They'd be above all that sort of thing. However, uh, since you bring it up... Yes, go on. I don't like to cast suspicion, but Dodge and his ranch foreman, Charlie Garrett, haven't been on the best of terms lately. Why not? What's Garrett got against him? You. Me? What do you mean? I think Charlie's feelings were hurt when he found that his boss was calling on an outsider for help, or so it seems. I see. Well, I hope those accidents were accidents, Mr. Conway, because if they weren't, somebody is going to hang for murder. Now back to Hop Along Cassidy and our story... Death Runs Dry. A drought, coupled with a series of mysterious accidents, caused Jim Dodge to call on Hoppy for help. After stopping in the sun-baked town of Pocorio for a talk with Dodge's lawyer, Sam Conway, Hoppy and California take the south fork that leads to the ranch. Carnation, Hoppy, we should have stuck to the wagon trail like Conway said. This here's the wildest, loneliest country I ever seen. Uh, it may be wild, but from the looks of that rider heading this way, I wouldn't say it was lonely. Hey, he's riding bareback. 
And that long black hair looks like an Indian. Probably is. Jim Dodge used them to help hurt his stock. Buenos dias, senor. Howdy. We're trying to find the Lazy D Ranch house. It's five miles, but you find no one there. What? And the men are all looking for boss, senor Dodge. Have you seen old man with white hair? We're looking for Jim Dodge ourselves. What happened? King Sabe, he ride out this morning and his horse come in without him. Senor Garrett, the foreman, he ordered everybody out for search. Mr. Dodge was expecting us. I'm Hopalong Cassidy. Me, Jose Blackfeather. Keep Crick behind you and you arrive at Ranch House muy pronto. Hasta luego. Come on, Topper. Maybe we ought to help look for the old man, Hoppy. Well, there's always a chance of him making his way back while everybody's out searching. Let's find the Ranch House first. Yeah. Man, you sure don't see many cattle around this spread. Well, you can't expect to build much of a herd on cactus and sagebrush. Who, who, who? What is it? Over there. Right at the foot of that Joshua tree. Hmm? Yeah. A man. White haired. Hoppy. Hoppy, is it Dodge? Yeah. He's dead. That, that, that's a bullet hole, Hoppy. He, he's been shot. Yeah, murdered. Some low-down sidewinder dry-gulched him. Well, we've been here at the Lazy D for three days, and the sheriff don't seem to be getting any nearer to figuring who killed Jim Dodge. Yeah, no. Hoppy, you've been sitting here all morning, a gone through papers in the old man's desk. What are you trying to find? I'm trying to find who owns this ranch now that he's dead. I can tell you that. Oh, uh, hello, Garrett. Come in. The Valley Range Association owns it. Or well, they will in less than five weeks from now. I wouldn't be too sure about that. I just wrote them yesterday about extending that loan. Ah, nice rifle you have there. 270, eh? Been hunting? Yeah. They've been hunting a polecat while you and Carlson have been hanging around the ranch house acting like you owned the place. Now, take it easy, mister. Hop the only... Simmer be... down, California. It's all right. Well... Any luck, Garrett? Any closer to that polecat than you were yesterday? A lot closer, Cassidy. I found the prints made in the mud. Prints? Yeah. Made by his horse when he rode out of the creek after trying to hide his trail. His footprints, too. And the prints of an unshod horse. The only folks I know who don't chew their horses are engines. Exactly. Kind of narrows down the search. So if you boys aren't too busy, we'll go out and find the sneaking redskin who killed Jim Dodge. Look, Garrett, I know how you feel. But I've only been doing the job Jim wanted me to do. Getting the business end of the irrigation project in shape. Who in thunder are you doing it for, the Valley Range Association? No, for you. What? It's your ranch, Garrett. Jim Dodge left it to you. What? It's in this will I found on his desk. Here. Let's see. Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, morning, Mr. Conway. I couldn't help overhearing. It seems I've arrived just in time to bring a bit of disappointment. What? That will you're reading, Garrett. It's been changed. Changed? I'm afraid so. Just recently, Mr. Dodge filed it in my office. That's what I've come to see you about, gentlemen. I've brought it with me. A will leaving everything to the granddaughter of a cousin of his. Uh, Miss Kay Darling of Chicago. May I see it? Here you are. Jim Dodge was her godfather. Always remembered the girl, though he hadn't seen her in years. You mean a gal is going to be running this outfit? That was his wish. He left it to her. <laughs> well, that settles that, I guess. If you push this irrigation system through on time, Cassidy, I, I hope she appreciates it. See now, Jim Dodge was hit about there and staggered a couple of steps and fell here. Doggone it, Hoppy. We've been over this place where Jim was killed a dozen times. Just what do you expect to find? Let's see. The slug entered here, angled down, came out here and back. Hit the ground about here. And it couldn't have penetrated very deep in the sand. Well, at least now we know from which direction the shot was fired. From over by the creek. 
And I guess that kind of proves that the engine riding that unshod pony fired the shot. Ah, here. Here's a slug, California. Hmm, that don't look like no bullet from a thirty thirty. It isn't. It's from a two seventy. A two seventy? Well, I'll be... Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. An Indian isn't likely to be owning a high-powered rifle like a two seventy around these parts. No, but Charlie Garrett's got one. Suppose we mosey on back to the creek and have another look at those hoof and footprints he found in the mud there. Son really baked him in that mud. Well, it looks to me, California, the killer stood behind the painted rock upstream, a piece, and shot Jim from there. Yeah, he, he must have rid out of the water about here. He dismounted and kind of looked around to see if there was anyone who might have seen or heard the shooting. Right. California, have you had a real close look at these hoof prints? Why, sure. I... Oh. See what I mean? Yeah, I see what you mean, all right. Yes, we've seen enough of the hoof print. But I want to study this footprint. What are you doing? I'm carving out one of these footprints from the baked mud. I'll see if we can get some plaster of Paris over at the vets in Pocaria and make a permanent impression of the killer's footprint. Might come in handy. Who knows? All right, you boys, keep that herd bunched up. Hey, Hoppy, look who's coming. That lawyer feller, Sam Conway. Hi there, Mr. Conway. What's the good word? I'm afraid I haven't any, Cassidy. I just got word from the Valley Range Association. They turned me down on extending the loan. Well, we'll just have to get that irrigation system done on time, that's all. I hope you do. Say, I just got a message that your new boss, Kay Darling, arrived this morning on the spur line at Poco Rio. What? Yes, quite unexpected. I see. Uh, she probably wants us to send a buckboard over to take her out to the ranch. Jumping bullfrogs. What the dickens is that coming this way? That cloud of dust sounds like shooting. Whatever it is, if it comes any closer, it'll stampede the herd. Jackson, Roberts, right close on that herd. Good heavens. It's one of those new horseless carriages I've been reading about. They're stampeding. It's no use now, Hoppy. Ah, oh, that crazy fool. A whole week's work shot to pieces. I've been rounding up the stock so we can sell some. What? We've got to sell some, Conway, if that pipeline's going to be finished on time. Ah, oh, well, look at them. It'll take over another week to round those steers up again. Doggone, that's the first time I ever seen one of those horseless contraptions. <laughs> look at it. Sitting there a-smoking and a-steaming. Come on, let's have a look, huh? Wait till I give that loco driver a piece of my mind. Boy, looks like a buggy without no whittle trees or a horse. Well, yeah, look at the way that driver's bundled up in them goggles. And that white coat and cap in this heat, too. <laughs> he must be loco. Mister, haven't you any better sense than to highball that thing into a herd of cows? I got a good mind to pin your ears back. Ah, the hospitality of the West. How refreshing. Oh, it's a gal. You, you must be Miss Darling. An amazing deduction. I decided to drive here in my new Durier special and save you gentlemen the trouble of escorting me. I simply despise horses. I thought you'd come in on the train. I had my car brought over with me on a flat car. I'm Sam Conway, Miss Darling. Oh, yes, my late relative's attorney. The chairman of your welcoming committee was just about to pin my ears back. <laughs> Mr. Cassidy is a great joker. Oh, uh... Miss mi Darling, it just happens that we spent a full week rounding up those stairs, and you came along and... Round them up again. And while you're about it, round up everything else as well, because I'm going to sell the ranch. What? You know, sell. Get money. You mean you're going to walk out on the people who've lived here all their lives, the ranch hands, the herdsmen, their families? If you object too much, Mr. Cassidy, you can always leave, remember? Mm. In the meantime, take my bags over to the ranch house while Mr. Conway shows me the place. Here, take these three here. I see. Conway, if you'll hand California one of those suitcases, I'll take the other one and that small makeup bag with it. Uh, which one? The black metal in there. Hoppy, isn't that Charlie Garrett heading this way? Yeah, he's riding like something was after him. Mm, I smell trouble. Hoppy! Oh! Garrett, what's the matter? I told you it was no use. The whole west side of the hill anchoring the pipeline's fallen into the arroyo. What? Somebody up in the hills used dynamite to start an avalanche. Come on, California. Let's get on over there. Come on! Come on. <laughs> Hey, 
Now back to Hopalong Cassidy in Death Runs Dry. In spite of the murder of his old friend, Jim Dodge, who owned the Lazy D, and the arrival of its new owner, Kay Dolan, who wants to sell it, Hoppy sticks to his determination of putting through the irrigation project that will save the ranch from foreclosure. We find him in California at the site of the latest disaster, an avalanche burying the pipeline. Horse roll! Move the horses out of the way there! Horse park section, please! Looks like the pipeline is completely buried. We'll never dig it up in time. Never mind the pipeline. Are the men all out of danger? I think so. Jose! Jose Blackfeather, he's missing! Great guns, Hoppy, I forgot. I sent Jose up there to recover some tools before the blast hit. We gotta get him down. Let's go, Hopper! Hoppy! Don't be a fool! Come back here! Hoppy, wait for me! You'll never make it! He'll be killed! Where are you? Over here, California. The other side of this boulder. This mountain walk easy. Won't take much to start another avalanche. Yeah. <coughs> Did you find Jose? Yeah. He's lying here. Oh. Hurt bad? Yeah, pretty bad. But not by the avalanche. He's been shot. What? Yeah. Jose must have caught the man in the act of setting off the blast that started the slide. Probably tried to stop him and was shot down. Jose... Jose, can you hear me? Jose. See. See. Who shot you, Jose? Who was it? Jose. Senor. Jose. He's dead. Poor devil. Oh, tarnation, Hoppy. We can't let the coyote who did this get away with it. Well, I... I've been wrong twice already. What? For a while, I figured it was Jose who killed Jim. Then, from a letter I got this morning, I figured it was Sam Conway who was behind all these accidents. But Conway was right beside us when the avalanche was set off, so he couldn't have been the one. That leaves only one, Hoppy. Charlie Garrett. I don't know. Garrett has a dozen witnesses to prove he was working on the dam below when that blast started the avalanche. No, there are a few things that still need explaining. Yeah, I reckon... I'm going to have to go around to a few blacksmith shops tomorrow and ask a few questions. Come on, California. Help me get Jose down from here. Hoppy, that was about the bravest thing I've ever seen anybody do. Going after that poor man. Frankly, I think there must be a madman loose. A homicidal maniac. Uh, could be you're right, Mr. Conway. First, those cowboys getting killed by that so-called accident. And Jim Dodge murdered. Now, Jose Blackfeather. Jose gave his life for the Lazy D, Miss Darling. I know. And my name is Kay. Do you still want to sell and turn these people out of their homes? Oh, come now, Cassidy. What choice has she got? It'll be impossible to finish the project now, don't you think? Better sell for what you can get for it now rather than lose everything by waiting. But we can finish the project on time. With three more carloads of pipe to replace that bird by the avalanche, we can make it. Kay, do I have your permission to sell part of the herd so we can get that pipe? But this is ridiculous. You'll never be able... All right. What? California, tell Garrett to order that pipe. You bet. Uh, Miss Darling, can I talk to you alone? I... I I have an awful headache, Mr. Conway, if you don't mind. Very well. I'll talk to you later. Hoppy, I didn't know there was murder mixed up in this. Well, now you know. Well, I don't think I like it here. Maybe I ought to sell. The Valley Range Association is offering a fair price. There's something else you ought to know. Jim Dodge once wrote me that whenever he dug a well around here, all he ever got was salt water or tar. Tar? Yeah. The avalanche opened up a couple of crevices with more of that black stuff oozing out. Only I've got a hunch it isn't tar at all. No. No, it's oil. Hoppy, Hoppy, I've been looking for you. The cook brought in some letters from Pocorillo this morning. One's for you. Here, from Abilene. Much obliged, California. I sent the boys to wait for the train when she pulls into Pocorillo. 
We'll need every wagon on the place to haul the pipe from the station. Hey, listen. There she comes. We'll see her when she comes through the canyon down below. Yeah. Yeah, that letter. Not bad news, I hope. No, not for us. You see, what? We... Hey, wait a minute. Ooh, what's the matter? Look, those two hombres way down there below in the canyon at the mouth of the railroad tunnel. Yeah. They're getting on their horses. What the tarnation they doing there? I don't know, but I don't like it. There comes the train around the bend, and those two mavericks are skedaddling up the side of the canyon. They blew up the tunnel. Come on, California. Let's get those sidewinders. I'll take the one with the rifle. Your man's running up the canyon. Head him off. You're going to have to shoot a lot better than that to get me, mister. Come on, Topper. Let's get it. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy. All right, stand up, you murdering pole cat, and let's get that bandana off your face. I want a good look at you. So, Conway. Yes, Conway. Surprised? Not too much, since I rode east and found out that you are the Valley Range Association and nobody else. Live and learn, Cassidy. Mighty brave, aren't you, to murder an old man who trusted you. You mean I killed Jim Dodge? You're crazy. What proof have you got? For one thing, that rifle of yours. Caliber 270, I see. The same high-powered job that killed Mr. Dodge. You call that proof? There are lots of rifles like mine. Ah! Stop! I can't keep up you dragon, Mr. Yeah, I got him, Harvey. I got him. Roped him like a doogie. Max Shively, eh? Your so-called law clerk, eh, Conway? You can't pin a murder on me, Cassidy. One of those Indians Dodge hired killed him. All the evidence points to it. That's what you tried to make us think. But you forgot one little thing, Conway. When you took the shoes off your pony, you overlooked the nail holes in his hoofs. They showed up perfectly in that mud. <laughs> Hoppy, don't miss a thing. And another thing. The morning we arrived, you happened to mention your horse was in the blacksmith shop, remember? Well, I found that blacksmith, Conway. He says he had to put on a full set of shoes to replace the ones you'd pulled off. Hey, he's lying. I can explain that. Can you? Then maybe you can explain those footprints you made when you scouted around to make sure nobody saw you shoot Dodge. Let's have that plaster Paris imprint from the saddlebag, California. Yeah, here you are, Hoppy. Raise your right foot, Conway. Now, look, boys, we can make a deal. Raise it, I said. There. Well, there it is. A perfect fit. Why, the dirty... Look, you can't mix me up in this. I had nothing to do with Dodge's murder. It was all Conway's Shut up, Shirley. He knew there was oil on Dodge's land, and he wanted to get... You fool, you were in with me in this up to the hilt. It was you who killed that Indian when he caught you setting off the avalanche. That's a lie. I can explain it. Ah, uh, tell I it do. to the jury, the both of you. All right, let's get going. Those skunks sure look good behind bars. Well, I guess I owe you two hombres a lot of thanks, both for myself and Miss Darling Hoppy. The only thanks you owe us is for yourself, Garrett. Huh? What do you mean? <laughs> Hey, look what's heading this way. Miss Darling in her horseless buggy. <laughs> hey, Miss Darling, where are you? Hey, Miss Darling, hey! <laughs> she sure seems in a hurry, don't she? Yeah, and I don't think she's coming back either. Huh? Uh, what do you mean? That Will Conway uh, showed us was a fake, Garrett. What? He hired this girl to pose as a relative of the old man and then rigged up a forged will, leaving the stuff to her. Well, I'll be dig -flasted. You see, it was that makeup bag of hers that got me uh, suspicious. Only an actress would carry around a case like that. 
so I wrote the address on the bag, and it turned out to be the El Campo Theater in Abilene. For the love of... After she found out there was murder mixed up in it, I don't think she wanted to be any part of it. You mean the lazy D now belongs... To you, Garrett. It's all yours. Well, come on, California. It's time we were heading back to the home spread. You bet. Hey, wait a minute. I'm cutting you two in for a share in the Lazy D right now. Thanks just the same, partner, but I couldn't be tied down with the responsibility myself. Me neither. I'd rather stay happy. <laughs> Happiness has one great advantage over wealth, Garrett. Your friends don't try to borrow it. Come on, California. Let's ride. This means it's so long from Hopalong Cassidy once again. Hoppy in California are riding back to the Bar 20 bunkhouse to sit with all the other waddies round an open fire and tell of the exciting little escapade you just heard. If you'd like more of these two-gun adventures of Hoppy's, don't forget, you can see him in the fine Hopalong Cassidy pictures at your local theater. Meanwhile, we're hoping you'll tune in next time Hoppy rides the airwaves to bring you more action out of the Old West. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Death Runs Dry was written by Irvin Ashkenazi. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.